morning, church. Are you all well this morning? How many of you are excited to be in the house of God today? Celebrating Jesus, our King and our Lord. And we're going to have a great day in worship today. I want to encourage you, open up your heart and everything that we have, we're dealing with in our life. We can come to the cross and we can know that Jesus took care of everything at the cross. He defeated everything. He overcame everything. And we are victorious today in Jesus' Name. Come on, let's give our God a great praise today. Son, 
he spoke for me. It was on Golgotha Street. He's dead blood liberty. He's dead blood liberty. Oh, he's dead blood liberty. May I never lose in anything except. Jesus Christ. May I not forget the blood he shed. It is by his death I am alive. Because of Christ, I am alive. Father, we love you, Lord, and we're so grateful today, God. 
We're so grateful, Lord, that You loved us, that You saw us, Lord. And Lord, as You saw us in our hopelessness, God, that You sent a Saviour, You sent Your Son, Jesus. And it's because of Jesus today that we are alive. It's because of Jesus that we have eternal life. It's because of Jesus that we can overcome it. It's because of Jesus that we can worship You and glorify You and we lift You up today, Lord. We lift up the name that's above every other name. We thank You, Jesus, and we give You praise. We give You glory. Come on, if you believe it, let's give Jesus all the praise. Let's give Him all the glory. What an, what an amazing day. It's Good Friday. Listen, it wasn't a Good Friday for Jesus, but it's a Good Friday for humanity. And the power of the cross of Jesus. And today we, we're so grateful that we can be in church and just remember the day that Jesus gave His life and sacrificed His life so that we could have eternal life and we could have life with God. And so good to be in church today and so good to see people coming into God's house and just honoring Jesus and the sacrifice that He made. Why don't you do this? Just take a few moments right where you are. Greet two or three people. Welcome them to church today. Tell them it's good to see you in church. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to our Easter Friday service. And what an incredible day to be in the house of God. You know, we know that it's probably not today that Jesus actually died on the cross, but all of those things can just cause distractions. What we, we know is that we get the opportunity today to mark in our calendar that we can celebrate Jesus. We can celebrate His death, His crucifixion, His resurrection, the sacrifice that He made for each and every one of us to be able to come into relationship with Jesus and then have eternal life after this crazy life that we get to live in. So incredible opportunity to be able to come into the house of God on Easter Friday and celebrate all that Jesus means to us. And perhaps you're joining us for the very first time. We know that on Easter Friday, we always have so many people who are visiting us. And we're so grateful that you've come to join us on this Easter Friday. Maybe your family or friends have invited you. We're so glad that you're here. We hope that you already feel at home, that you're amongst friends, that it's a safe space. Uh, we really want nothing from you other than to just be able to create an environment for you to relax and receive from God what He has for you today. And so can we welcome all our visitors, church? So glad that you're here. And welcoming everybody joining us online from wherever you may be and all of our serve team who have given up their seats in the building to sit in overflow rooms so that we can fit congregation in the space, welcoming you too and grateful for everything that you are serving over this weekend. And uh, I want to encourage you to keep your communion because we're going to be taking communion at the end of the service. And so we haven't forgotten about communion. Um, just if you don't have one, the host team will be able to get that to you at the end of the service. But we have communion at the end. And um, also wanted to encourage you, we have the scriptures of the Easter story throughout our North and South foyer. And so on your way out, if you have time or on Sunday, they'll still be here um, to just read those scriptures and just allow this weekend to see settle in our hearts and just cement our faith and who Jesus is to us. And so um, if you do have questions about the church, if you're new to the church, we have a Next Steps team and info desk in our central foyer space, and they can assist you with anything that you need. But uh, really just so glad to be in the house of God and the presence of God. Beautiful place to be. Encouraging everyone to come back on Sunday for part two of the Easter story and invite your friends and family. Maybe people can come today, but they can come on Sunday. Um, still inviting people, still encouraging people to come into the house of God in Jesus' name. Such a great day. The day that changed everything for humanity. 
what a day, a day that we should never forget, a day that we should always be in remembrance of, whether it's this time of the year or wherever, whenever it's throughout the year, we remember that God did something significant through His Son, Jesus Christ, on that cross. You know, today as we remember Jesus, it's, it's probably two things that are so significant that stick out about the nature and the character of God. Number one is God's great love for humanity that God loved us so much, and not only God's great love for humanity, but God's generosity towards humanity, that Jesus, the Son of God, heaven's best, was given as a sacrifice for you and I. And, you know, many of us, we know this passage, we know this scripture, but, you know, when something significant happens in your life and something that you could never do that somebody else does for you, and then that impact of that action transforms the trajectory of your life and the future of your life and changes your destiny, it's very difficult to put in words, how do you say thank you? How do you show appreciation? How, how do you be generous with the things that you have? Because in all truth and honesty, all of the generosity and all the words of thanks cannot suffice for what Jesus did on that cross. The Bible says in John 3, 16, for God, this is, how, this, is, this is what it says, for this is how God loved the world. So God showed how he loved the world, that he gave his only, one and only son, so that everyone who believes in him will not perish, but have eternal life. So important to read the next scripture. God sent his son into the world not to judge the world, but to save the world through him. Jesus came into this world as God in the flesh, gave his life on that cross because the truth of the matter is, is this, is that our sinfulness and our way was heading into the place of destruction, away from God that we were abandoned by God because of our, our sin, not because God wanted to abandon us, but because our sin separates us from God. And God saw this, and God of His motivation of love, not of His motivation of judgment, wrath, or being upset and angry with humanity, out of His motivation for love, God said, I'm gonna send my son Jesus. God gave heaven's best, showed His love, and was generous towards us. And I was thinking about today as we get the opportunity to remember everything that Jesus accomplished for us. And when it comes to our, our time of giving to God, how do, we, how do we motivate and how do we, we inspire giving in this moment on this particular day where we choose to remember God? And you know, church, can I just be honest with you? I have no words how to motivate you. I could try and motivate you, but nothing can motivate us beyond the love that God has for us. And today, as I was thinking about my own personal giving and how I'm gonna give to God on this day, I pray that, that what Jesus has done for you on Calvary, you would not need to be inspired, that you would not need to be encouraged or coerced or having to tell you a great story around this, but that you would receive the revelation that you were a sinner headed for hell, but God saw you, he loved you. He sent a rescue mission, his name is Jesus. And he took your place on that cross so that we would not die, but have eternal life. And today I pray that your giving would be out of that motivation that God did something for us on this particular day as we remember Jesus, that we could never do for ourselves. We could never accomplish salvation in our own strength. But because God so loved the world, He gave His Son. Let's pray as we get ready to give today. Father, I pray, Lord, that our giving today, Lord, would be out of the motivation of all that You have done for us, Lord. I pray, God, that every person that's giving to You today, God, Lord, that that as they give, Lord, that you would, you'd bless them, Lord. You'd protect them and you'd provide for them, Lord. And you'd bring increase into their life. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, why don't you turn your attention to the screen as we get ready for the message today.
From the time that sin entered the world, right in the beginning of creation when mankind was created, from that moment sin entered the world, there's been an exchange. There's been an exchange for the sin of man, that an animal would be sacrificed and, and the blood of that animal would be offered as an atonement or the forgiveness of that sin. It's exchange has been taken place to cover and deal with the sin problem that mankind has had to endure through the generations. Today, our Easter message is, is called the great exchange. At the cross, there was a great exchange that took place between God and mankind. In Matthew 27, we read the story about Jesus and the buildup of Jesus going to the cross. And even in the buildup of Jesus going to the cross and be, before even getting to the cross, we see how this exchange starts to play out. It says here in verses 13, 11, or sorry, should I say of Matthew 27, now Jesus was standing before Pilate, the Roman governor. Are you the king of the Jews? The governor asked him. And Jesus replied, you have said it. But when the leading priests and the elders made the accusations against him, Jesus remained silent. Don't you hear all of these charges they are bringing up against you, Pilate demanded. But Jesus made no response to any of the charges, much to the governor's surprise. Now, it was the governor's custom each year during the Passover celebration to release one prisoner to the crowd, anyone they wanted. This year, there was a notorious prisoner, a man named Barabbas. So we have a situation here where, where two people are on trial. One named Jesus and the other one, Barabbas. Barabbas is a, is a sinful man. He's a, he's a murderer. He's an insurrect guy who started an insurrection and, and he's guilty. He's a sinful man, rightly standing trial for his atrocities and facing the death penalty that would come his way. Jesus is a revolutionary. Jesus came down to bring the kingdom of heaven down to earth and so that people could experience the kingdom of God. He came to restore what was lost to humanity through the sin and the fall of man. And Jesus was going around doing good and healing all people and coming to proclaim the kingdom of God. He's an innocent man, sinless man. And now the decision is in Pilate's hands. Pilate has the power and the crowds now have the power to choose who should be released as the innocent and be acquitted from their trial. Look what it says. As the crowds gathered before Pilate's house that morning, he asked them, which one do you want me to release to you, Barabbas or Jesus, who is called the Messiah? For he knew very well that the religious leaders had arrested Jesus out of envy. Just then, as Pilate was sitting on the judgment seat, his wife sent him a WhatsApp message, Leap. Leave that innocent man alone. I suffered through a terrible nightmare about him last night. And meanwhile, the leading priest and the elders persuaded the crowd to ask for Barabbas to be released and for Jesus to be put to death. So the governor asked again, which of these two do you want me to release to you? The crowd shouted, Barabbas. Pilate responded, then what should I do with Jesus who is called the Messiah? They shouted, crucify him. Why, Pilate demanded, what crime has he committed? But the mob roared even louder, crucify him. And Pilate saw that he wasn't getting anywhere and that a riot was developing. So he sent for a bowl of water and washed his hands before the crowd saying, I am innocent of this man's blood. The responsibility is yours. And all the people yelled back, we will take responsibility for his death, we and our children. So Pilate released Barabbas to them and he ordered Jesus flogged with a lead tip whip, then turned him over to the Roman soldiers to be crucified. A lot of our life is, is made up of exchanges. We exchange our time and our skills so that we can earn an income. We exchange information and conversation so that we can build relationship. In a parent-child relationship, there are exchanges that for good behavior, there is a reward for that. In school, you exchange your time of leisure and you put that time into studying so that you can be rewarded with good grades. 
When you get married, you exchange the benefits of single life for the blessings and responsibilities of married life. Every day, people are exchanging something to get something. To every exchange, there is a cost and there is a benefit. And this was a great exchange that was taking place here right before Pilate's eyes, that the trial of Jesus and Barabbas, where Jesus exchanged his innocence for Barabbas' guilt. Where Jesus took upon Barabbas' crime, Barabbas' crime and gave him his innocence. Across the world today, from all over the world, different groups of people, different demographics, rich, young, old, poor, colored people, in the midst of all of our differences, today there is an awareness that on this particular day there is a remembrance of the cross of Jesus and what Jesus had accomplished on that cross, that the Son of God became flesh and blood and He took on the role of a humanity and, and He came and He died and He was crucified for the, for the sins of mankind. And from that moment where Jesus was on trial to the time that he went to the cross and he died on that cross, so much happened between heaven and earth. Between God and man, through the death of Jesus Christ, there was a great exchange that took place. On the cross, a divinely ordained exchange took place. All the evil committed, all the sins of the human race, and each individual was placed on Jesus, and all the good due to the sinless obedience life of Christ Jesus was made available to those who believe in Him. Martin Luther said this, he called the sacrifice of Christ's life on the cross the greatest exchange. It is, great, it is the greatest exchange, not just because of what was done, but because of who did it. You see, to understand the value of the exchange of the cross, we need to understand the value of the person who died on the cross. That Jesus was the Son of God. Jesus was sinless. Jesus was innocent of any crime or any sin that mankind could ever place on him. In fact, look what it writes here in, in Colossians chapter 1. It says about Jesus, it says, Christ is the visible image of the invisible God. He existed before anything was created and is supreme over all creation. Through him, God created everything in the heavenly realms and on earth. He existed before anything else and he holds all creation together. I want you to know that your life may feel like it's falling apart, but the scripture tells us that Christ is supreme and he holds everything, everything that's created, he holds it together. He is the beginning, supreme over all who rise from the dead. So he is the the first in everything for God in all his fullness was pleased to live in Christ Jesus was God on earth if you looked at Jesus you would look at God and through him God reconciled everything to himself he made peace with everything in heaven and on earth by means of Christ's blood on the cross the cross is the great exchange. This includes you who were once far away from God. For you were His enemy, separated from Him by your evil thoughts and actions. Yet now He has reconciled you to Himself through the death of Christ in His physical body. As a result, He has brought you into His own presence. And you are holy and blameless as you stand before Him without a single fault. A perfect sacrifice was needed for the great exchange. Jesus was that sacrifice. Nothing, no one can compare to Jesus. And friends, I want you to know today that the cross is the greatest exchange that you and I will ever experience and ever have access to. And personally, that exchange impacts our lives. History is filled with stories filled with stories about men who claim to be gods. It's filled with stories about religion promising us that our goodness will elevate us to the realm of God and make us right with God. But Jesus, fully God, descended from heaven to earth, the only God who came down in human form to take on the sins of humanity and to walk with humanity, to know the suffering of humanity, to know the pain of humanity, the rejection of humanity, and then offer His life as a sacrifice and exchange a life of humanity, a life of holiness, should I say, to surrender it to the cross. That exchange that Jesus made. His life was a life of holiness, a life of righteousness, a life of blessing would be exchanged 
so that you and I could be made right with God. Can I say Jesus didn't deserve to die? There was no, the, the, the crime that Jesus, that they accused him of was, was fault. It, 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 was, it was flawed. In fact, even the trial that they put Jesus on was illegal. They didn't do it at the right time of the day so they could avoid the people. Everything about Jesus going to the cross in human terms was illegal. It was unfounded, untrue. But Jesus went there and when he went to the cross, there was a great exchange. Isaiah says this, he was pierced and rejected. A man of sorrows, acquainted with deepest grief. We turned our backs on him and he looked the other way and we looked the, and looked the other way. He was despised and we did not care. Yet it was our weakness he carried. It was our sorrow that weighed him down. And, and we thought his troubles were a punishment from God, a punishment for his own sins. But he was pierced for our rebellion, crushed for our sins. He was beaten so we could be whole. He was whipped so we could be healed. And all of us, like sheep, have strayed away. We have left God's path to follow our own. Yet the Lord laid on him the sins of us all. The Bible tells us in Isaiah 53 what happened at, that, at the cross and the exchange that was made at the cross. And today I wanna give us seven exchanges that Jesus made on the cross for you and I. The first one is this, is that Jesus was punished so we might be forgiven. Jesus was punished. It says that he was pierced for our rebellion and crushed for our sin. You see, sin makes us guilty in the eyes of God. And because we are guilty, of our sin and God is just, there has to be a consequence, there has to be a payment that needs to be made for the sin and sin needs to be dealt with. And you know, the guilt of humanity was placed on Jesus. In the Hebrew, the word guilt is the word avon and it means guilt, punishment or rebellion. And what it paints a picture of, it's not only the rebellion and the guilt that was taken care of, but it's also the means that when Jesus went to the cross that he took care of all of the consequences of that guilt that God placed on Jesus at the cross, the guilt and rebellion of the whole human race and all the evil consequences so that you and I may be forgiven and be released from the consequence of sin and experience the benefits of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ. Jesus was beaten. He was bruised, his body was beyond recognition, the Bible says. And the people looked at him and they despised him and they rejected him. Jesus took on the full wrath of God in his body so that you and I could be forgiven of every sin. The very first words that Jesus proclaimed as he went up onto the cross, he said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. Jesus took the punishment, your punishment, my punishment, the punishment of the human race, he took it in his body on that cross so that you and I can be forgiven. And we were forgiven when we put our faith in him, when we put our trust in him, we were forgiven of every past sin, every present sin, and we will be forgiven of the sins that, that come along our path into the future. Jesus exchanged our punishment so that we could be forgiven and be made right with God. The second exchange that Jesus made on the cross was Jesus was made sin so that we might be made righteous. Jesus took upon himself the punishment of our humanity and exchanged God, in exchange, God reckoned to our account the perfect righteousness of Jesus, his son upon our lives. Can I say, church, we desperately need this exchange because without this exchange, there is no salvation. In fact, the Bible, Paul writes about the state of humanity and how we exchange the things that are not true and we exchange the things that this world has to offer rather than the things that God speaks to us and the truth of who God is. Look what it says here in Romans 1. They exchanged the truth about God for a lie and worshiped and served created things rather than the creator who is forever praised. I love what Paul writes in Corinthians. He said, for God made Christ who never sinned to be the offering for our sin so that we could be made right with God through Christ. God made Christ who never knew sin to become sin so that you and I 
could be made right with Christ. The only way there can be salvation is through this exchange. We need a perfect record in the eyes of God to be made righteous. And because we've all sinned and because we have sin in our life, none of us have a perfect record. But when we receive Jesus Christ as the sacrifice that was made on Calvary, that He becomes our salvation and the means for our forgiveness, then we are clothed in righteousness. So now when God looks at us, He does not look at us through our imperfections. He sees the great exchange of the cross and He sees us as righteous. God loves us as much as He loves His Son Jesus because He paid the price for you and I and the exchange took place that our sins were exchanged for Christ's righteousness and the enemy can't put any guilt on you. He can't put any shame on you because at the cross there was this exchange. Sin for righteousness. And today we are made right through the cross of Jesus Christ. You don't have to work for your salvation. You can't earn your salvation. You can't give your way to salvation. You can't climb a ladder of religion to salvation. It's only through the cross of Jesus Christ when God looks at that and He says, I see you believe in the cross. I see you believe in the blood of my son. You are now clothed in righteousness. You are no longer clothed in sin because of the great exchange. Number three. Jesus became a curse so that we might be blessed. The exchange that took place, that Jesus reversed the curse. Jesus took the curse of of creation upon him and the fall of man upon him. When Adam and Eve sinned, a curse fell upon the earth. And Jesus took that curse upon him. And in doing so, he redeemed us. To redeem something means to restore it back to its original idea or original state of being. You see, Adam and Eve were blessed by God. They were appointed by God. They, they had all they needed and they had more than enough than what they needed. They had God-given authority and they ruled over creation. They had authority over creation. God blessed their work. But the moment sin entered the world and sin fell upon mankind, the curse of st- sin now stands between God's blessing and our relationship with God. Our relationships because of sin have been tarnished. Our relationships with families, billions of relationships all over the world have been damaged by the impact of the curse of sin. But Jesus came and he took that curse upon him so that we can be set free once and for all. And now we can experience the blessing of God in everything. Jesus came to redeem us and when we put our faith in him, he took the curse of creation upon him. And now you and I, while we lived in a fallen world, we live in a world that's polluted with sin, you and I can live a different life. We can live a redeemed life where we can walk in the original idea and state that God called us because Jesus made an exchange. He took the curse, the crown of thorns upon his head so that you and I could be blessed by God. The next exchange that Jesus took upon him and happened at the cross is that Jesus was wounded so that we might be healed. They flogged Jesus with the lead tipped whip with nine tails, and they whipped him 39 times upon his back, one after the other. They whipped him 39 times and never went beyond because if they went beyond 39 lashes, what would happen is a person would die, and they didn't want Jesus to die from whipping. They wanted to crucify him on the cross. And on each whip, there were nine tails. And so for 39 times, the nine tails would be hit upon Jesus' back. 351 stripes were placed on the back of Jesus. And the reason he was whipped, the Bible tells us that his stripes, he was whipped so that by his stripes, you and I can be healed. In that moment when Jesus was whipped, it, the pain and the suffering was beyond any form of sickness or disease that any human could endure. 
But Jesus took all of that suffering and that pain on his back so that this, the curse of sin that brings sickness and disease, he could restore our health. He could make us whole. And by his stripes, you and I are healed. That you and I can walk in wholeness and healing, physical, emotional. And I wanna declare over your life today, by the stripes of Jesus, you are healed. By the stripes of Jesus, you are fruitful. By the stripes of Jesus, you can bear life because Jesus took our sickness and our disease upon him. I love what it says here in the scripture that he was beaten so we could be whole and he was whipped so we could be healed. The fifth exchange that happened at the cross is that Jesus became poor so that we can share in his abundance. The word poverty can be defined as hungry, thirsty, nakedness, not having in a time of need. Poverty is a result of sin. And when Jesus died, he was hungry. When he got onto the cross, he said, I thirst. When he was placed on the cross, he was naked for the world to see. And when it came time for Jesus to be buried, he used a borrowed tomb and borrowed robes that were placed around his body. Jesus, at the time of the cross, was, bare, was stripped bare of all of the resources that he, he has great access to. In the moment of his crucifixion, Jesus had nothing. He made himself poor so that you and I could share in his abundance. The Bible says it like this. You know the generous grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, though he was rich, Yet for your sakes, he became poor so that he, by his poverty, he could make you rich. Jesus became, emptied himself of all of heaven's resources so that in that moment he could take on the poverty of humanity so that you and I, when we put our trust in him, we can be restored to the abundance that God has and we could experience the blessing of God. You are not called to live a half measured life. You're not called to struggle through life. At the cross, Jesus paid the price for all of that. Jesus has called you to share in his abundance and that great exchange takes place at the cross. The sixth exchange was this. Jesus was rejected by God so that we can be accepted by God. They say that rejection is the deepest of all human wounds, that it impacts our heart more than any other thing that happens to us is when we are rejected. The mark of rejection makes you feel like you're on the outside looking in or trying to get in. Jesus was rejected by God which was something he would never have ever experienced from the beginning of time. God turned his face against Jesus. In that moment of rejection and abandonment, Jesus suffered. Uh, Jesus didn't die from physical effects of the crucifixion. When Pilate heard that Jesus had already died, he was so surprised because normally it would have taken about two or three hours longer than that for somebody to die. Jesus died because he was rejected by God and he gave up his spirit. And for the first time in history of the universe, the Son of God cried out to his Father and God turned and chose not to look at him, not to hear him, to abandon him and to reject him because of the sin that was placed upon him. Because God cannot look on sin favorably. And Jesus in that moment endured our rejection. And immediately after that, he gave up his spirit. The father did not answer. The father turned away. And in that moment when Jesus gave up his spirit, the Bible says that the very first thing that happened was the temple veil was torn in two. That from the top to the bottom, a, a thick curtain was torn from the top to the bottom. And the reason it is, is because no man could tear that curtain. Even from the bottom up, no man could tear that curtain. The reason it tore from the top to the bottom, because it confirmed that God had torn the veil. The veil was used to keep unholy men outside of the presence of a holy God. And in that moment of rejection and abandonment, Jesus did the exchange that once we were rejected by God, but now we we are accepted by God because of Jesus. From noon until three in the afternoon, darkness came over all the land. About three in the afternoon, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lema sabachthani, which means, my God, my God, 
Why have you forsaken me? And when Jesus had cried it out again in a loud voice, he gave up his spirit. And at that moment, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth shook and the rock split. Jesus exchanged his, our rejection at the cross so that we could be accepted. And number seven, Jesus tasted death so that we could, might have eternal life. The cross church is the greatest exchange. Jesus gave his life for our lives. He became death so that we can live. The course, the curse of death was exchanged for eternal life. One day we, when we die, we're all gonna die. But because of the cross, when we die, we can have eternal life and be in the presence of God. Billy Graham, the great evangelist, preached to over 210 million people. He died at the age of 21. At, on the 21st of February, he died at the age of 19, 99. Sorry, I'm getting my dates mixed up here. Let me start that again. Billy Graham died on the 21st of February, 2018, at the age 99. A messenger of God. He had planned his own funeral ahead of time with the sole man purpose of sharing his faith in Jesus Christ. And he said this, one day you will read or you will hear about Billy Graham that he has died. Don't believe it, it's not true. I have not died, I am alive now more than I ever will be. I have just changed the dress. I will be in the presence of a living God. Jesus, exchanged eternal death by giving his life so that you and I can have eternal life. 1 Corinthians says, death has been swallowed up in victory. Where, O oh, death, is your victory? Where, O oh, death, is your sting? Jesus reversed the curse, church. He reversed the curse at the cross and you and I don't have to live under any curse. And his body was placed in the tomb that confirms that Jesus' work on the cross was completed, that God had accomplished everything through the great exchange of the cross. And my friends, the Bible says this, greater love has no one than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. My friends, Jesus did not die on the cross because it was a heroic action. He did not die on the cross because he wanted to be a hero. He died on the cross because God loves you. He died because sin separates us. He died so that you and I would be forgiven of our sins and today there is salvation in no other name but the name of Jesus. Jesus paid for our sins. Jesus went to the cross. Jesus went to the cross because He saw you. He saw me. He saw us helpless and hopeless and He paid the price so that we can be redeemed. The greatest exchange that the living God would die for the dead, so the dead might come alive. The cross is the greatest exchange. And if you're thankful for the cross today, can we give our God a great praise, amen. I'm gonna ask you to stand to your feet right now, and as you stand to your feet, we're gonna take this time. We're doing this a little bit different this year when we take communion. We're gonna take communion the Bible says in the book of Matthew, get your communion ready as we prepare our hearts. And as we prepare our hearts, I want you to picture this moment where Jesus is sitting around the table with his disciples. The Bible says that the time where Jesus went to the cross was the time of the Passover. And they were busy eating the meal. Look what it goes on and it says, as they were eating, Jesus took some bread and he blessed it. Don't eat it yet, I, I wanna first read this. <laughs> then he broke it in pieces and he gave it to his disciples saying, take this and eat for this is my body. And then he took a cup of wine and, and he gave thanks to God for it. He gave it to them and said, each of you drink from it for this is my blood which confirms the covenant between God and His people. It is poured out as a sacrifice 
to forgive the sins of many. The Bible says that while they were eating, Jesus took the bread. So important to know this, that even though it was at the time of Passover, Jesus did not say, this is the Passover. He said, this is my body. Jesus became the Passover. He's our Passover lamb. He's the sacrificial lamb. We don't get saved through a Passover lamb and through a meal. We get saved through the body of Jesus Christ and the sacrifice that was offered on that cross. And Jesus deliberately said, take this bread, which represents my body. And whenever you take this bread, remember my body, that on that, my, on that cross, my body was offered as a sacrifice to pay the price. The body of Christ was the great exchange. And today as we take the bread, let's just take a moment and just thank God for that great exchange that took place at Calvary for each and every single one of us. Let's take the bread and let's eat together. After the bread, Jesus, he took the cup as we read and he, and he said, this is a new covenant. Means the old covenant is gone. The new covenant has come into play. It's more powerful than the old covenant. The old covenant was about being right with God was through animal sacrifices. It was through the shedding of the blood of animals that would be offered as a sacrifice. And coupled with that, there were a whole lot of laws that would have to be kept to be made right with God. And Jesus said, I have come to fulfill the law. And that my blood would be shed upon that cross to forgive the sins of humanity. That the sins would no longer be, for, no longer be covered, but they would be forgiven and removed from humanity. Jesus paid the price for each and every single one of us. And today as we take communion, friends, the best news that any human could ever receive is that they are being forgiven of their sins against God. It's one thing to have sin against somebody else, but it's another thing when you have sin against God. Because God cannot look down favorably upon a person who has sin. But through the cross of Jesus and through the blood of Jesus, when we believe in him and we put our trust in him, we are forgiven in the moment of all of our sin and made right with God. Isn't that amazing news? Let's take the cup. Let's drink together. You can take your seats just for a moment and as we get ready, just to think about this incredible day that, that took place over 2,000 years ago. But let me encourage you that the event happened over 2,000 years ago, but the plan was put into place right in the beginning of time. Jesus came. He didn't come for one group of people. He didn't come for one color of people. He didn't come for the rich. He didn't come for the poor only, only should I say. He came for all mankind and he created a pathway. You see, because without the truth, man creates his own truth. Without a direction, man makes his own direction. And as a result of sin in this world, man has made his own direction and own truth to get to God. And there's different ways that people believe they can get to God. This is the truth and the reality of, of, of all religions is that there is a basis and a belief that if we do a certain kind of practice or a lifestyle, then we will get to God. But Jesus came to show us the way to God because he is God and he is the son of God. John 14, 6, Jesus answered and he said, I am the way, the truth and the life. No one comes to the father except through me. I want to encourage you that is the greatest truth that has ever been told to mankind, that Jesus Christ is the truth. He is the way. And the way we get to be in relationship with God is through Jesus Christ, believing in the cross, believing on everything that he's accomplished. And Jesus sent his son to the cross because he loves us, because he cares for us 
because He wants relationship with us. He wants every exchange that happened on the cross to be personal to every single one of us. That personally, we would experience forgiveness of sin. Personally, we could walk in the healing. Personally, we can experience the abundance of Christ. Personally, we can know that we are righteous because of Jesus. Personally, that we can have eternal life through the death of Jesus Christ. It's through Jesus, the great exchange. And today, this whole day is about men and women coming, celebrating Jesus, giving remembrance to Jesus. But, but also, very important, this day is about people who don't know Jesus as their personal Lord and Savior. That they would be able to make this decision and accept this great exchange that happened at Calvary for mankind. And today you're in this room, maybe you've been invited by a friend, or maybe you've, you, you've just, something prompted you to come to church, and we're so grateful that you've taken the time to be here today. But the most important thing that happens in the service happens right now, is for people who know they, they need to be saved and are not saved, people that need to be forgiven of their sins. This is what we do church for. This is what, what God came to do, is to came to save the lost and to heal them. And you're sitting in the room today and you might say to me, I don't have a relationship with Jesus. I don't know God personally like this. This exchange, I've just seen the cross as a symbol. It's just something that I've prayed to, but it's never been real to me. It's not alive in me. It, It doesn't feel like that I experience everything you speak about, that God's word promises. Well, today that can change. And all you gotta do is you gotta, you gotta participate in that great exchange. Jesus gave his life. Now all you gotta do is give him your heart. And when that happens, that exchange takes place. Every head bowed, every eye closed. If you're sitting in the room today and you say, you know what, I wanna receive Jesus as my Lord and Savior. I'm gonna count to three and when I get to three, right where you are, I want you to raise your hand. I want you to raise your hand high and I want you to raise it like you believe that that this is the right choice and the decision for your life and that God loves you today. One, the Bible says, for God so loved the world that he gave his son Jesus to die for you. God loves you today more than you will ever know. Nothing in your past can ever change the love of God. God for you, anything that's happened, no matter how bleak it is, no matter how bad it is, God loves you today. And he wants you to receive him today. Two, all you gotta do is gotta say, God, I open up my heart. Jesus said, I knock on the door of your heart. If you would open up, I'd come in. All you gotta do is say, Lord, here I am, I open my life to you. If that's you right now, three, just raise your hand and I'm gonna pray with you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Hands going up all over the room today. Is anybody else? One more time. Today, the Bible says, is the day of salvation. It's the day where you can leave this room knowing that you are made right with God. That you could leave this room and, and if anything by, by tragedy had to happen to you, and it's not to put fear or anxiety in anyone's heart, but if something had to happen to you today, would you know that your life is right with God? And that's why the scripture says today is the day of salvation. And if you're unsure of that, today, why don't you surrender your heart and be sure and say, Jesus, I receive you as my Lord and Savior today. If you haven't raised your hand and you wanna do that, raise your hand right now and I'm gonna include you in this prayer. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I want you to believe these words as I pray them over your life today. Father, we come before you, Lord, and we're so grateful for the cross of Jesus Christ and the exchange that took place and that Jesus, that you came and that you died for us to forgive us of all of our sins. And so today, Lord, we ask that you would forgive us of every sin that we've committed, everything that we've done today. Lord, I thank you, Lord for saving me today, for, for, for giving us eternal life. And today in this moment, God, we open up our hearts to you and we surrender our life to you. And we follow you today in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Come on, let's give God a great praise for those people. Martin Luther said this, the salvation of man is by grace alone, through faith alone, in Christ alone. And today, congratulations on that decision. If you made a decision to follow Jesus after the service, we'd love to connect with you just for a moment of your time. If you go into our central foyer, you'll see our Next Steps team is there. Go there, spend some time there. And we're so grateful that you came to be a part of celebrating Easter with us, Jesus, the death of Jesus on that cross. Don't forget Sunday, we got three services. Friday is the first part of the story. Friday was doom, but Sunday is coming because Jesus rose from the dead. Amen. God bless you today. We look forward to seeing you on Sunday.